Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the new people that uh, have just joined the channel. We did get some kind of a, a growth spurt, I guess, over the past 48 hours. Uh, a couple of our videos are starting to gain a little bit of traction and it appears as though we're starting to reach more people. Now, in regards to that, I put up a community post yesterday. And uh, because, you know, of course, there are people that need saving and reaching on other platforms, TikTok included. So I open up an account over there and you wouldn't believe the backlash that I got from a select few in the community post. Some were actually trying to say and compare different social media platforms as more or less evil than others. I mean, that's just like trying to say Jezebel was less evil than Cain. You guys, it's all social media. That's the entire point. That's why we are here on social media to reach the lost sheep. And even if there's one person that can see the power of what the Holy Spirit has revealed on this channel, then it's worth it. You know, sometimes we forget Jesus went into the synagogue of Satan. And the time for being safe and comfortable Christians in our protected bubble is over. What does he say about those of us who are lukewarm? He says he will spit us out. Now, I get some of the same criticism from not, not a majority by any stretch of the imagination. We're talking a select few of even covering some of the content we do here because we look at the mainstream entertainment don't we which all the lost people are watching what better way to reach them than to show them that what they think is just mainstream stuff that they think doesn't have any secret messaging in it you show them and then the theme and agenda of the enemy is revealed and then what do they do they run to the arms of Christ, don't they? Once they see the enemy encroaching all around them, all around their children and their family. So I'm sorry for those who disagree about us opening an account on TikTok and were giving me a hard time last night, but we have work to do. Jesus didn't come for the righteous. They're already saved. He came for the wicked and the lost. And if we take the time to look at our Bibles, it should be very clear why I started a TikTok channel. Anyway, all this is probably for naught because I've already been banned for uploading. They took down, a, all it was was a clip of, uh, we're going to call him Ouchie, from the 1980s in which he makes some really weird comments about things that hadn't happened yet. It was pretty specific. I think he even talked about not forcing people to get a smack of the nation. I think that's what the clip was about anyway. Because that video was taken down from TikTok, I removed it here from YouTube so we wouldn't have any problems here. So they froze the account. I can no longer upload there for however long. I don't know how TikTok works. You can still see the other videos that I uploaded on TikTok if you just go to the link underneath this video. And if you're already on TikTok, you should subscribe to my TikTok channel. If you're not on TikTok, don't worry about it. I'm not trying to send people into the lion's den, as some have accused. Now, here's how it works. If you're already there, you watch and like the videos. And to the eyes of the unbelievers, this grabs their attention, right? Because this is how social media works, unfortunately. Because in their eyes, the content is more legitimate, the more views and likes it has. Then what happens is, hopefully, some of those people click the link that directs them back to this YouTube channel so they can get the meat, the longer decodes, the better understanding, the fuller understanding. At that point, we have to let the Holy Spirit do the rest of the work, right? But by not being there, by not having a presence over there... You're missing all those people. You guys, there are people that don't even watch YouTube. They just watch TikTok. So how are we going to reach those people if we're not over there? 
So I appreciate all of you that did understand. There was a lot of support on the community post. And you did understand what we're trying to accomplish here. Following the instructions set out for us by Jesus, who went to pagan weddings. He went and hung out with a with a uh, a lady of the night, let's call her, who had many husbands at the well. He went into the synagogues of Satan, even though he never built a church for himself. He went into their man-built churches and called them out. And for those of you that don't understand what we're trying to accomplish here, I recommend that you pray about why those negative feelings came up in which you tried to sabotage the effort and why all these accusations were manifesting out of you. So that's a soft rebuke. And again, pray about the spirit inside of you that wants you to stay safe here in our little bubble of protection instead of doing the actual work that Jesus told us to do. Because half the social media world or more is on TikTok. And how are we supposed to reach them unless we're on TikTok? It makes absolutely no sense to me. So enough of that. I just wanted to get you guys updated on that. Some of you saw the community post. I wanted to set the record straight and let you know what was going on. Probably had several people unsubscribe and that's okay. Again, I didn't, I'm not here for them. I'm here for the lost, which is exactly what Jesus told us to do. He's not here for the righteous. He's here for the sinners. So let's get into this Westworld Decode. Now, this series is crazy. This is basically 100% disclosure all the way through. I'm going to play this first part here. I think this is from like episode four or three or four, maybe. So let me just give you a little bit of the backdrop of Westworld. For those of you that don't know, basically the elite create this playground for themselves called Westworld, in which they have created very lifelike, human-like robots. And they're basically indistinguishable from a real human being. And because they're robots, the elite can go in there and it's their little playground and they can just do whatever they want. They can be whatever they want. They, uh, you know, do bad things to these robots. In that part of the series, um, I try to skip past. I don't show you that because it's pretty crazy. And you start feeling sorry for the robots and that's the intent. They want you to feel compassion for artificial intelligence, for robots. And throughout the seasons, as, they, as the plot progresses, the robots end up breaking out of Westworld, spilling out into the rest of the world, rest of humanity, where they wreak havoc and pledge their revenge against their makers and all of humanity who they believe don't deserve to exist based on the way they treated them as robots. So that's the backbone of the plot of Westworld in a nutshell. So these machines that look like humans have taken over and one by one, they replace and kill the people in power so that they can advance their agenda. So it's literally like invasion of the body snatchers. Now here's the metaphor. The metaphor is, is that this is actually real. That the metaphor is that they want to replace us. They want to snatch our bodies and replace us with artificial intelligence. Now, how they do that is what you're going to see next. Let's take a look at this. Hello again. Hello again. Now, of course, you've seen that before, haven't you? In I Pet Goat Tune. It's a scene right out of it. The apple rolls across the floor. Hits Obama's shoe. What does this represent? This is the spirit of possession. It's the twin spirits emerging from the lotus. The ancient Egyptians saw the lotus as representative of the spirit, the soul, opening up from the black goo swamp. 
Now in iPad Go 2, it possesses Obama. As you can see here, his eyes light up. And this is all New World Order disclosure. Hello again. Now she's an android and this other guy with the all in black with the pop stick, he is one of the creators of Westworld. Hope you don't mind me dropping by. Who are you? An emissary of a new world order. Hope you don't mind me dropping by. Who are you? An emissary of a new world order. So obviously, a disclosure going on right here. They know exactly who they are and what they're doing. And then all of a sudden, this new aspect to the plot emerges. What is the what is the plot aspect? Well, it's a Jive G tower. The Jive G tower controls people's behavior. Watch. How many others are there like you? As of now, 249. It's killing them. The noise. Do you hear it? The tower. It's coming from the tower. There's the Jive G Tower. Now, I, I was a little stumped here about what this tower is visually. Because it appears many, many times throughout the Season 4 of Westworld. If you guys have any ideas about what this tower is, if you've seen it before, usually I can spot these things, but I can't understand the symbolism behind this tower as of yet. I guess it kind of looks like the Seattle Space Needle. I guess it kind of does. Let's keep watching here. Of course, there always has to be Apollo's white horse from Revelation 6-2 because this is the means by which they will carry out this conversion from human to artificial intelligence. The white horse is involved with the crown and the toxin, the toxon. In the bow, right? Now, in this part, this android is in heaven. Android heaven. And they call it the sublime. And he has these visions of a white horse. Let's keep watching here. They call it the song with no sound, some kind of subliminal frequency. What tower? You think I'm crazy? Huh? Pulling string. What tower? Now, the story behind this woman, Evan Rachel Wood, I believe her name is, is troubling. This woman suffered from ritualistic, uh, I can't use the word, but you know what I'm talking about. When she was married to Marilyn Manson, he was wanted. I don't know if he got arrested or not. He was hiding up in the Northeast trying to evade authorities. He might have turned himself in already, but the accusations that this woman has against him are stunning. I guess he met her when she was not even of age. So there's some weird stuff going on. And it's weird how she plays this character who's basically an android. Artificial intelligence, which is the twin spirits within one body and those spirits are split through trauma this is the paperclip effect a smaller shape within a larger shape breaking off a part of the personality and this is the part of the personality that is controllable by the demonic spirit possessing the human host so it's interesting how Life imitates art with Evan Rachel Wood. Let's keep watching here. You think I'm crazy? Huh? Now, as we've talked about at length, the spiral is the visual representation of a portal. Now, evil and good can travel through spot the spiral portal. 
There are many examples in the Bible in which God presented a portal, a spiral portal, to either reveal himself or to speak to the faithful ones in the Bible. In fact, with Job, God emerged as a whirlwind, it says. And then Elijah, there was a whirlwind. And then we had the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day as God was in front of the Ark of the Covenant. Pillars are spirals. Now, there's something else interesting about this because you're going to hear them talk about spirals because that's a central component in Westworld. They enter the spiral. It's a portal, but it's also a womb. Let's let's watch this and I'll show you what I mean by the spiral is a womb. Pulling strings. And we were fucking... He cussed. Fucking delighted when you got yourself out of that spiral. Oh, I'm sure you were. Now look, you had a good life, though. We don't begrudge you for it. You know what I learned? When I was in my spiral, I thought I was wrapped in power. I'm what you call neurodivergent. I've had some time to become comfortable with that. So he admits that he's neurodivergent. What that is, as you're going to see as this plot plays out, they introduce this black goo into themselves, which allows them to merge with the AI. Now, this is exactly what's happening right now as we speak. The black goo is merging with humanity to allow the demonic spirit to come inside. And let's see, it's probably now is a good time to pull this up. Thanks, Sophia, who sent me this article about black phosphorus is the new graphene. Because phosphorus means light bearer. That's the translation. It's actually called Lucifer. And this is the new technology that they're talking about that will replace silicone or silicon, sorry, used in electronics. They say this is superior to graphene. And there's something to this. So thanks, Sophia, for sending me that. We'll dig into that in the coming days, weeks, and months. But this is crazy. Now, I'm going to show you something that literally blew my mind when the Holy Spirit revealed this to me years ago. The Bible says that the womb is called a matrix. Now, I get pushback from people. They're like, that wasn't in the Bible. Why would that be in the Bible? That's a modern word. Well, say what you will, but it's in there. The womb is called the matrix, and we think we figured out why. Because the musculature of your uterus, of the womb, looks like a matrix. The honeycomb matrix. And this is a diagram showing the layers of musculature around the womb. The Bible says we're born into sin. In other words, the moment you become flesh, your flesh is already corrupted. There's no way out of it except through Jesus Christ. Yeshua, Yahushua. Now, we just talked about spirals. And here's another image of the musculature of the womb. There's several layers. This is why you get these different effects. But they call it the double spiral arrangement of fibers in the uterus. Not only that, the umbilical cord follows a spiral shape as it attaches to the child. This is the matrix we're born into, which is why the Bible calls the womb the matrix. It's the portal that brings us into sin. Why? How could this happen? Why would God allow this? Well, it's not God's fault. It's the enemy who tainted and infected our entire reality. And this is why God sent us a lifeline, a true narrow gate, a true umbilical cord, Jesus Christ. And he didn't even make it that hard. You just have to believe. 
Once you start believing, you love him. When you love him, you start to try to keep his commandments. And the rest is simple. Keeping his commandments means trying to help other people to believe in him. And now you see what this is all about. Now, some people also noticed that the uterus looks like the shape of a bull. The head of a bull. And maybe that's the case. The beast. We're born in these beast bodies. Now, let's get back into this. It's shocking. And in order for the tower to control people with its signal that you can't hear, you have to be infected by the black goo. How does a black goo infect people? They put it into flies. The flies go in your ears and eyes. And this reminds me a lot of Gilly Bates and his mosquitoes. Watch this. It wouldn't be practical for us to replace all of you one at a time. And what kind of existence would that be for us? <laughs> So the, this guy, they strap him to the inside of the car. The fly goes in his eye and infects him with the black goo. I want my people to be able to grow. Flourish. A black goo look familiar. A black goo look familiar. Wow. And there they say it. They're now using the very same terminology that those of us in the truth community were using, revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. Now, I wasn't the first person to come up with the black goo term. But we've talked a lot about it, haven't we? I think one of the first people that started talking about this was Nicholson, 1968. Now, let's keep watching here. Look here are the flies and here's where they basically um you know combine the flies with the black goo they're infecting the flies with it it's basically like programmable matter which is basically the seed of the serpent is what it is that's why it's black I believe that this black goo originated from the canopic jars, which is like a clay vessel, right? So it's a big choke. They stored their internal organs in these clay vessels so that they could then reinfect our clay vessel, our pot, which is the human clay vessel. What was that? What? Perhaps it's not at a frequency you can hear. So the tower starts popping off frequencies. She hears it because she's an android. He's human. But, um, you know, it's trying to send instructions on how to control her. And there's the Jive G Tower. You guys, literally, for those that follow the channel, you know that we've talked about this at length. So to see it showing up in real time after we talk about it in these television shows is stunning. Gift of the Holy Spirit to warn God's people against the devices of the devil. Now, again, the black goo is linked to Jive G. The two work independence of one another. And the device won't work unless you're integrated with the black goo. The sound is coming from this device. This guy's being controlled. He's already got the fly. This was the guy that had the fly in his eye earlier. And they've got him doing these things. Now he eventually uh, takes himself out with a pop stick upon the instructions of the signal. But I'm not going to show you that part. The sound is somehow controlling them. The hosts. So, at the end of this episode, this guy gets pinned down and he gets a fly in his eye. So that's where things sit with 
Westworld. Let me go back here in the chat, see what you guys are up to, and see if you have any questions about all this. Thanks to the new channel member. Thanks, Brits Bit. Appreciate that. All right. Now, don't forget, after this show, if you're already on TikTok, to go subscribe to our channel so that we uh so that people can see that they can come here and get the meat because people need saving over there so i appreciate that and someone asked where nicholson is i think his facebook i saw a few posts from him i think he added me as a friend so he's still around i think he's working on a big project or something if i remember correctly you guys this youtube thing is tough you know I'm kind of, uh, God's got me in this, in some kind of a pattern, um, you know, and it gives me the energy and strength to continue to wake up every single day and do this, but it's not for everybody. You know, I have a pretty simple life. My children are all grown. You know, my son, he pretty much is self-sufficient. He does his own thing, even though he's living with me. And, but I spend 60 to 70 hours a week doing what I do to, to put this up for you guys. And God sustains me, but it's not for everybody. And, you know, for those of us veterans that have been around for a while, like Nicholson and, and, uh, KJ scariest movie ever, it's, it's tough to sustain that over the period of time. It's very difficult. And so everything that you guys do to help in this process, you know, the positive comments, um, some of you have taken, the time we were able to give to the channel, all of that helps and strengthens us so that we can keep moving forward. Now, people have asked me, why do you say us all the time? Because this channel includes all of us. This is a group effort. If you haven't figured it out by now, 90, 80, 90% of the things that I cover here are suggestions from all of you. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I do go into the comments and try to heart every comment I agree with and reply to at least 5 to 10% of the comments. And from that, we're able to keep moving forward. It's the body of Christ. But that takes a lot of work and dedication. So therefore, this is a full-time thing for me. And for those of us who can't make it a full-time thing, it's very difficult because they want to, but they're not able to. Because of life commitments, children, spouses, you know, um, you know, just the the sheer work behind it is a lot of work. So pray for the channels that have not been uploading as much for one reason or another. They could have lost channels, which takes the wind right out of you. You work so hard for the kingdom, and then your channel just disappears, and you start from zero, and you've got like. 2,000 subscribers and it's very difficult to maintain that because the time it takes to do it you're not going to have the time if you're also working a full-time job in other areas so we are blessed and I will never forget that that we are blessed I never want to take that for granted I always want to be grateful for what God has given us here and who knows how long it's going to last but we're here and pray for the channels that aren't here anymore because they need our prayers and they need our strength. I remember there was a channel called Scrawny to Brawny. And I was inspired by that channel. He put out some of the greatest truth work on YouTube. And he was a great editor on top of it. And he lost his channel and it decimated him. Well, he came back like, I don't know, probably six years ago. Many of you will remember Scrawny to Brawny. And he said that we had inspired him to keep going. He came back for a bit, put up a few more videos, but it's very difficult to start all the way over again. You know, so. All right, let's go into the chat here. Enough of me talking. Let's see what you guys are up to. All right. You guys make this channel. Never, ever forget that. Remember, oh wow, how the tower looked like the stone's shadow. It kind of did, didn't it, Mimi? Now, we've kind of gone away from some of the more advanced editing. You know, all the editing we did on this channel was mostly through, like, Movie Maker. Pretty simple editor. 
you know, and um, I used to do a lot more editing with music soundtracks and all that. And it looks really cool and it grabs people's attention. I know that that's kind of like Nicholson 1968's style and that's great. But um, because the, the information is coming at us so fast and furious, it's like I don't have the time to do that anymore. So I pretty much just try to present what's presented to me through the Holy Spirit. I will edit together the clips and hopefully that's enough to capture people's attention because the information is so important. It's so important. So I know that some people like more of the entertainment aspect and the, the great editing because that is more shareable. You can get that out to a lot more people. Um, but I'll leave that part up to you guys. You know, hopefully the work stands on its own without the bells and whistles. All right. What else do we have here? I applied to get a job as a video editor. Didn't make the final cut, says Yabadaba. Thanks, JK Bell. All right. Yeah, hit the thumbs up. Why Now, why do we hit the thumbs up button? Let me tell you why. Okay, for the lost sheep, they are stuck in the matrix where they believe that things that have more thumbs up and seen by more people is actually legitimate. It stops them in their tracks. It grabs their attention. And they go, oh, that's something I might want to look at. Nobody looks at videos with no thumbs up and 10 views. That's the enemy has created that matrix to where this is how it works. And through that, the enemy can adjust the algorithms to keep suppressing the amounts of likes and views things have to delegitimize it in the eyes of the sleep people. This is why we have to always thumbs up the videos and like the videos and watch them because it's basically countering the sorcery of the enemy so that we can get the word out far and wide. That's the best way I could describe it. Hopefully that makes sense. I know some people are hesitant to ever thumbs up a video. I don't know why, but that's the way it works. So, all right. Now, I understand some people don't have accounts on YouTube. They just check in on the channel, and that's fine, too. That's probably why we're, we don't have, you know, 700 thumbs up right now. But um, I'm just trying to explain to you how this platform works so that you understand why I keep asking you to do that. Also, YouTube rewards uh, channels or videos that have more thumbs up. It puts them in the recommended section and all these things. It has the ability to go viral and all these other things. But if you don't do that, it's almost like through our actions, we're suppressing our own videos by not kind of playing along with the algorithms. So, all right. All right, what else do we have here? Do you guys have anything you want to talk about today? Any questions? Yes, if you don't have time to watch a video, you can speed up the playback. Thanks, Kanga Kong. That's a great recommendation and suggestion. You go into the video frame. You can change the playback speed. I even watch my own videos at 1.25 speed. Sometimes... If I'm on someone else's channel who kind of talks slower, I'll put it up to 1.5 or 1.75, which means that you're going to get through that video three quarters to half the time faster. So those these are suggestions. Anyone, anytime someone tells me you talk too slow, I just tell them to increase the speed. You know, like we got to start using our noodles to get through some of this content. All right. What else do we have? Good questions and suggestions, you guys. Joe watches most of YouTube at 1.75 speed or 2 speed. Yeah, because it's weird. Like, okay, so think of it this way. Um, So the new and popular trending YouTube channels, now I don't suggest you go watch them because it's all empty garbage, but they talk really fast, don't they? And there's a reason for that. Because 
It's all about, you know, getting as much information as they can as possible, keeping someone's attention, having them watch all the way through the end of the video. And they're just, you know, talking so fast. So when you come to a channel like this, that's got the Holy Spirit here as a resonant and guiding us in our footsteps, that's not how God works. God is more, he slows things down. It's a meticulous step-by-step -step process learning things on top of other things and so it can appear to be slow but i have people that come to the channel that tell me i talk too fast still or they're not grasping the concepts because i'm moving too fast through the concepts so the way to get around that is just speed the video up great suggestion yes brit's bit the attention pan span is shorter absolutely some creators speed it up, then post it, says Bill. Yep. Will you break down Roku? Hmm, I guess I could do that. I could take a look at that at some point. All right. Natalie says membership fee. No, there's no membership fee. Everything on this channel is free. But some have gone above and beyond and signed up for the channel membership to support the channel. It's only for people that are able. It's not a pressure thing that you have to do. But you can sign up to give monthly to the channel and support us in case what happened like with Call for an Uprising. All his channels got unmonetized. How is he going to get by in life? He's probably blacklisted from most jobs because of the type of work he's, he does here on YouTube. And so now he's got to figure out how he's going to support himself and also continue to make content. So prayers go out to the people that that's happened to. But this is why those of you who have the ability have gone above me on and become channel members. It's just like a little extra thing that people do to help make sure that this work continues. But it's not required. Okay, what else do we have here? I don't comment. Thanks, Hayden, but I don't comment on other channels typically unless I've known them for years and years and years, um, which is why we don't do a lot of channel collaborations because on YouTube, it's guilt by association, right? I comment on some channels, but not others. I just, and especially if I haven't gone to their channel and looked at their work. I believe Jamatri is a language of the devil, of the enemy. Some people use it to, just like you would use, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Astrology. Just like you would use astrology to make choices and de decisions about your life. Some people use Jamatria to do that. And that's called, what is it called? Divination. Some people use it to try to predict the future. Try to pick teams that are going to win. People start gambling on that. Okay. So that's those are my feelings on that. That's why you never ever see me do the Gematria calculator. I just don't. There are channels that use the Gematria calculator to say that God and the devil are one and the same. Because if you look at the values, they're the same. Well, who do you think came up with that? The person who came up with the English language. To confuse the body of Christ. Go, oh, maybe they're just one and the same. Maybe evil is good and good is evil because they equal the same thing in the calculator. So just be careful with that. Not to say you can't make observations about these numerical values and go, wow, this is what the enemy is using to do this or that. But the minute you cross over into, I'm going to predict something with this, that's bad. And I won't do it here. So... Yes, that's what I said, Chris. The enemy uses that, and you can make observations about it, but not live your life by it or predict things with it. All right. That's a good question. And that's my opinion. You, you know, you might not agree with that. I know some people are hook, line, and sinker all about Gematria, swear by it. And that's your prerogative. I'm not going to hate you for that. I'm just telling you what we do here. Uh, 
All right. We are living in the last days. Certainly feels like it, doesn't it? All right, guys. Unless you guys have any other questions, I love each and every one of you. And remember to go check out, if you're already on TikTok, just click the link. It's right there in the uh, description of this video. And join the channel and, and uh, help that get seen over there so people can come back here. Hopefully we'll have a bigger family. I love each and every one of you. Have a great day. Take care and be safe.